we essentially live in a state of you know following a script of what our lives should be but that if you can look past that and grow past that and become self-aware i think almost like the power that you can gain is to some degree inherent you know it's it's in you already that you just have to pull away some of that veil and be able to realize that you can tap into it to be able to grow as a person on your own without even having to bring in those extraterrestrial forces yeah i i actually tend to uh, the more that i've been working i i in this book i kind of touch upon it a little bit my second book it's called H.P. Lovecraft's Magical Persona and the Cthulhu Mythos, and that's kind of like a more extended study of Lovecraft's concept of the magical persona, and I show some of the literary antecedents to that, and I show how that concept of the magical persona is projected out into uh, other mythos literature and other writers as well. And what I'm trying to, what I'm, I'm slowly working into is kind of like a quantum view of magic, where we get rid of the things like the astral bias or the astral plane or the different levels of being. And we look at a magical act as kind of like in a quantum effect. And that's a very interesting thing, you said, because uh, according to the quantum physicists, they tend to view the whole uh, observation and measure sh- measurement of things as being a problem, basically, because it kind of disrupts the uh, steady flow of amplitudes that quantum physics postulates, and so what ha- happens ultimately with quantum physics is that they don't, they they actually don't understand how a person can observe and choose a certain outcome. They don't understand that at all because that kind of goes against the theory. And they usually reduce to uh, two possibilities. You know that you actually don't observe anything, or that quantum physics is nonsense. And quantum physics certainly isn't nonsense because we can use it to measure things at the subatomic level, and it's a lot more accurate than any other kind of Newtonian measurements. But the, the thing about we never really actually observe anything, I think, is a very telling point, and Lovecraft touches on that. What he's saying is that reality is incommensurable. And if you look at his definitions, particularly in a story like The Dreams in the Witch House, which he wrote in, uh, in um, 1932, he actually presents a very quantum view of reality, and what he's claiming in there is that what we see is what we've been conditioned to see, and that there's a reality behind that, and we have to find some way to actually experience or see that reality, and it requires, like, different kinds of observations, different kind of measurements, and I would argue that in order to actually see beyond that veil or behind that veil, so to speak, we need to have some technique for doing that. And science has no technique for that, not yet, anyhow, but magic does. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything in the future. Also, make sure that you're following Spooky South Coast across all social media, especially Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.